All right, welcome back. Here's part two. Um, this question asks if the following uh, converges. And uh, anytime you see a factorial, you want to think about using the ratio test. And the ratio test is if you take a ratio of consecutive terms. Um, coincidentally, that's how you find R in a geometric series. But um, anyway, uh, if you take the ratio of consecutive terms and the limit as n approaches infinity, uh, is less than 1, you have convergence. So the hardest part is just setting these up. So we're going to take the limit as n uh, approaches infinity. And then what we have is kind of like a an e to the 4, and then n gets replaced with n plus 1. And then we have an n plus 1 minus 2 factorial. And then uh, get in the habit of instead of writing a nice complex fraction, it's you're always going to be able to multiply the reciprocal. And the nth term is just this thing that's represented in the series. And so you have to remember the reciprocal, though. So the n minus 2 factorial will go on top, and the e to the 4n will go on the bottom. And the idea is that this big mess um, should simplify. And so, uh, for instance, if we look at just the e's, um, you'd have something like this over something like this. And you could use a... Um, exponent rules to subtract the exponents. Um, but the idea is that you have four more e's on the top. And so when you when you simplify this, if you if you simplify these two parts, it turns into just uh, an e to the fourth uh, in the numerator. The other part that we need to simplify is these guys. So what we really have is n minus 2 factorial over uh, n minus 1 factorial. And remember, you can think of uh, n minus 1 factorial as n minus 1 times, take 1 away, n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4. But there's always going to be one that has one more term, and you have to just identify where it's at. So the second piece here reduces to just an n minus 1 on the bottom. All right, we're almost done with this question, but the idea now is what is the limit as n approaches infinity? And so the last trick with this is that the limit only affects things with n's in them. e to the 4 is a constant, and if it helps you to, to pull that constant out so you're not worried about it, you're really just taking this limit because it's the only thing that has an n. But that limit, you know, 1 over infinity in calculus is 0. So it's like you have a 0 times some number. But 0 times a number is 0, and it all happens so quickly, 0 is less than 1. And so the final answer is that this does converge. It's a little bit tricky there. All right, we're on the home stretch. Um, the P series is kind of the most specific test, and it says if you have a, a series with this form, if P is strictly greater than 1, it will converge. So that's cheat sheet worthy. Um, I doubt it'll show up, but you never know. Um, so if you had something like this with like 1 over n squared, instantly, because P is greater than 1, it converges. Um, if you have 1 over, you know, n to the 2 thirds, or 1 times, sometimes they show up something that makes you think a little bit, you know, n to the 1 half would be square root. Um, these are both less than 1, so both of these would diverge. We'll come back to if n equals 1, that's the harmonic series, but I think that's on the next slide. So uh, this one over here, the next one asks just, does this converge? You know, quickly, can you determine it? The first thing is anytime you have you know a negative 1 to an n or a, an n plus 1 or an n plus 3 in this instance, you're going to get a series that alternates signs, you know, as that negative 1 takes different powers. So this is an example of an alternating series. Um, sine and cosine are also examples of alternating series. But um, if you ha have an alternating series that also decreases, let me just give you a basic one. 
you know, uh, whoops, if we do one minus, you know, one half plus one third minus one to the fourth, um, you know, plus dot, dot, dot. This is the series um, that represents, you know, negative one, and you've got, you know, the n down here. Well, each, each consecutive or each uh, subsequent term, one third is, um, you know, smaller than one half. And one fourth is smaller than, you know, one third. These are decreasing. So if it alternate signs uh, and it decreases, then you say that the series actually converges by the alternating series test. So back to this question, it'll end quickly. Um, it, it definitely alternates because of this. If you look at the denominator, um, the denominator is just going to continue to get larger. You know, uh, you, you could plug in a few values, but just think about it. Um, if n is a positive number and you substitute it in, every time you're going to cube it and times it by 4, each number is going to keep getting larger as you, as you write more and more terms. But if the denominators are getting larger, then the fractions are getting smaller. And so this converges by the alternating series test. All right, harmonic series, I mentioned harmonic series is the series 1 over n. And so it looks like, uh, you know, 1, if you plug in 1, then 1 half, 1 third. And this is just one you kind of want to have memorized. It, it always kind of makes an appearance at some point. Um, again, hard to tell if it's going to make an appearance this year. But you want to know that that's the harmonic series. And the harmonic series diverges. It's kind of the cutoff point. Notice it's where there's like a 1 here. So it always diverges. Interestingly enough, the one I just did on the last uh, page, if you have an alternating harmonic series, and that actually is the name for it, we have something like this. That one converges, but the original harmonic series diverges. All right, Taylor series for L and X. So um, if the function is L and X, then the derivative um, would be 1 over X. And then the second derivative would be negative 1 over X squared. And remember your rule that you want to have memorized is that the Taylor series has this structure, f of a, f prime of a, uh, x minus a, f double prime of a, um, x minus a squared as far as you want to go. This one said write a, a second degree or a quadratic or something. Um, in this example, a is 2. So what we have here is the first term would be ln2. And then the derivative with a 2 plugged in. So that would be 1 over 2, x minus 2. And then this piece right here, just be careful with your fractions, that's going to be this with a 2 plugged in. So I think that's going to be a negative 1 fourth. And then just be careful with the fractions. That's just the, the just part of the, of the answer. You still got an x minus 2 squared. And you still have a 2 factorial in there. Sometimes that 2 factorial gets lost. And so if you look it up online or in a rubric or something, you'd actually probably see a 1 8th if you simplify this. Again, reminding you, you don't have to simplify expressions like that. All right, last question. You're given a, a, a series. And then it asks you to find the derivative. So I just want to remind you that with Taylor series, you can take the derivative of each term separately, which is really nice because these are mostly made with powers. Then you'd have like an 8x over 2, you know, 24x squared over 3, 64x cubed over 4. You don't have to simplify it. But just because it's going to help us with part C, I'm going to. So what you really have is a you know 4x. You have 8x squared. You have 16x cubed. And so on. Then part C says, uh, I, I think C is tricky. It says find f prime of, I think it's one third. I hope. I don't have it up on this device. 
And um, if you try to plug one third in to all these spots, you know, it does go on forever. And it can be uh, oh, quite a bunch of work. So the thing that it doesn't tell you to do, um, but I, and I think it's really clever, is that if you look at the F prime of X, it's a geometric series. And um, the R is actually 2X, meaning the pattern. And you can actually find the R, I mentioned it briefly verbally earlier, but if you look at the ratio of consecutive terms, meaning 4x over 2, or uh, 8x squared over 4x, if it's truly a geometric series, that R will emerge from any consecutive terms that you find. So, if um, it has an R, then... Um, we can think of, of convergence or finding a sum using this formula. Again, kind of going full circle. But what we what we haven't done is, you know, think about, well, the first term is 2, but now we're saying the r is, you know, 2x. And so believe it or not, um, if we wanted to find the sum, which is really what this means if you did happen to plug it in here, then we could say that the sum, um, which is f prime of, of one third, would be two over one minus two times one third. I get replace that, and I've got two over one minus uh, two thirds, which is two. I'm going quick. I hope I did this right. Which is six. So that's kind of wild, but uh, kind of cool too. So. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Feeling good about everything.